father died when I was born, and then my father died. I never stopped moving. Au nom de la mauvaise foi, je te baptise journaliste. A new female take on the adult film industry. Balzac's rich human tapestry comes to the screen and Kelly Reichardt's deeply American cinema celebrated here in Paris. That's all coming up in today's film show. And for that, I'm joined by critic Lisa Nesselson. Hi, Lisa. Hello, Olivia. Now, we're starting with a film about what is arguably an exploitative uh, profession, but the director was adamant she'd not make an exploitative film, which is quite the challenge. The resulting movie is called Pleasure, and much of it was made on the sets of pornographic films. Does it have some social value? Oh, uh, pleasure is unquestionably educational and worthwhile viewing because it's smart in its approach to a multi-million dollar industry not known fairly or unfairly uh, for being overly concerned with the emotional and physical welfare of women. This is the tale of a young woman from Sweden who comes to Los Angeles intending to set the porn industry on fire. She's motivated as can be, has a strong sense of where she wants to go and how to get there, and radiates ambition and assurance. If her chosen field was law or fashion or computer programming, uh, just about everybody would say her drive is admirable. But porn? Well, why not? Uh, there are inevitably power games and dicey situations for women in any workplace. Uh, so our protagonist, her stage name is Bella Cherry, is fascinating to watch as she climbs the porn industry's version of the career ladder. Now you could argue that um, part of what actors, any actors do, is to sell their bodies for money, as in their likenesses. But most of us assume that selling tactile and visual access to your so-called private parts is a whole other field of endeavor. Mm, certainly next level. Now, uh, Pleasure was shown in competition at the recent Deauville Festival of American Film, where France 24 caught up with writer-director Nina Tyberg. Here's more from her and a taste of the film. We auditioned regular actors uh, up until just a few weeks before shooting, but I never really believed them the same way because uh, I had built the script uh, on this world and this, this culture. They just felt much more authentic and uh, like in a way they could also help me sometimes in a scene if there was something that I was a bit unsure of. Like even though I had done the research, there was still like always details that I didn't know and I could get their expertise on like, yeah, this is how we normally do this. And they suited better for the parts in the end. Sexy, be sexy. Who's the girl? That's the new Spiegel girl. What's the Spiegel girl? They're like the A-listers of porn. Hey, pick up the phone, who's bold enough to try and call my bluff? I want to be a speedler girl. Your social media is pretty small. You have no fan base yet. So I suppose, like, high-level athletics or something, porn is not a career where you can expect much career longevity. <gasps> no, if, if I had a daughter who wanted to be a porn actress, I can't picture myself telling her, well, okay, honey, but make sure you have something to fall back on. Uh, but it's not a characteristic of youth to plan so really far into the future. I frequently get into friendly arguments with people about whether women watch movies differently than men do, and especially whether women make movies differently than a man would. I've only seen two movies this year directed by women where I truly believe that only a woman would have approached the filming in the way we're shown, and pleasure is one of them. Mm, she certainly sounded like she knew exactly what she mm. wanted to do there. Now, American filmmaker Kelly Reichardt is the subject of a retrospective here in Paris at the Pompidou Centre. Her most recent film, First Cow, is out in France this week. Tell us more. Well, this is a suspenseful tale of entrepreneurship with a side order of theft set in Oregon in the 1820s. It's a highly original costume picture about what it took to survive, let alone thrive, on the American frontier, and it's also a winning indictment of capitalism. At first, casual acquaintances, Cookie and King Lou, dirt poor, desperate, intend to make their fortune, and as the saying goes, um, every great fortune starts with a crime. Well, they make fresh scones in the most unlikely outpost imaginable by secretly milking the title bovine brought to the bustling middle of nowhere by a snotty British official. You could say the owner of the cow, marvelously played by Toby Jones, is uh, lactose intolerant. He will not tolerate other people helping themselves to the milk produced by his cow. He is not interested in sharing the edible wealth. Mm, capitalism via mm. cows. Okay, let's take a look at First Cow. Good Lord, give me another. 
I'll give you six ingots for that last one. I taste London in this game. You got a window here, Cookie. History isn't here yet. It's coming, but maybe this time we can take it on our own terms. is a really interesting indie filmmaker who has formed with both contemporary material and historical stuff, doesn't she? Absolutely. She's very comfortable with both. But the historical dramas always have political overtones for the current era and never shy away from sexual politics. She often takes her inspiration from short stories. She's been making films since 1994, when she was 30. Reichardt's 2006 feature, Old Joy, just re-released here in France, is about the once close friendship between two guys who have little in common now with the passing of time. It's a story about men told by a woman. First Cow is a story about men through and through, based on a story, a book by a man, but put on screen by a woman. Her Wendy and Lucy in 2008 stars Michelle Williams, and it's one of the best movies I think I've ever seen about having run out of options to survive in a very cruel world. Night Moves in 2013 had a superb cast and looked at eco-terrorism from an interesting angle. Reichardt is a deeply American filmmaker who may be more appreciated so far here in Europe than she is at home. And uh, like you said, hers is a consummate, independent, creative voice. Mm, Wendy and Lucy, very memorable film. I do remember that one all those years ago. Now, moving on, our next film is French, an adaptation of a Balzac classic. It, that's the second Balzac adaptation this month after Eugénie Grandet. This one is called Lost Illusions. Tell us more. Ah, this story, a portion of Balzac's human comedy, has everything love, sex, art, ambition, suspense, betrayal, and a terrific cast in the hands of an excellent director, Xavier Giannoli. I enjoyed it thoroughly. It's the story of a young poet who leaves his native Angoulême, so provincial France, to tackle the Paris literary scene. And what a scene it is. We're told that every day the bodies of people who have run out of options are fished out of the Seine, so not starving is always good motivation to, to succeed. Lucien Rombempere discovers a whirlwind of self-interested strivers. He has the good fortune to be shown the ropes by sardonic and pragmatic Etienne Lousteau, played with a scowl by Vincent Lacoste. How do the arts intersect with power? How do the tiniest details in society seal one's fate? It's fun to see the now sedate Palais Royal overflowing with lascivious prostitutes inventively hawking their wares. It's even more fun to see that journalism in general and arts criticism in particular were up for grabs to the highest bidder. Applause or the throwing of rotten vegetables in many theaters could be negotiated for cash. It gave me into some insight into why so many people just assume that critics get paid to say nice things about movies. I've been waiting 35 years to get bribed. Wrong century, I guess. <laughs> this film is elaborate, moving, and beautifully filmed. And you can say that again. Poets certainly aren't high rollers today. Let's take a look <laughs> at some of that beautiful period detail in Lost Illusions. J'ai besoin de travailler, monsieur. Je respecte énormément le métier de journaliste. Et tu crois que c'est quoi mon métier? Vous éclairez les gens sur l'art, le monde. <rire> mon métier. C'est d'enrichir les actionnaires du journal. Notre ligne éditoriale sera simple. Le journal tiendra pour vrai tout ce qui est probable. Je sais qu'il vaut mieux que cela. Vous croyez Wow, what's impressive there on the press particularly is how prescient Balzac was just all those years ago in terms of where the world was headed. Oh, you can say that again. Nearly 200 years ago, he intuited the growing power of advertising, the role of the press in influencing public opinion, the workings of society, and especially celebrity. Gerard Depardieu is a hoot as a successful publisher who happens to be illiterate. Uh, Xavier Dolan has real presence as a sharp-tongued wag with a genuine talent for writing novels, and Benjamin Voisin is marvelous as the determined young man whose illusions fall by the wayside. Mm, we'll definitely be checking that one out. Now, finally, here in Paris, the 17th edition of My First Film Festival is taking place for our very, very youngest viewers and perhaps their handlers. Well, I find this annual initiative nothing short of brilliant. The City of Paris promotes the idea of getting young people into the habit of going out to the movies. Very young people with programming suitable for ages 2 
through 12. It takes place in 12 Paris art houses, all but one of them independently run, spread across 10 of the city's 20 districts. They've programmed over 100 films suitable for kids with a theme of nature this year. Uh, the guest of honor is French animator Remy Chaillet, and the guest country is Iran. They also produce cine concerts to get kids excited about live musical performances, and there's a prize for best film music to hone young tastes. It's only four euros a ticket, and of course it sends the message that it's now safe from a health standpoint for families to go back to brick and mortar cinemas. They even arrange to hold screenings in children's hospitals. Now it worries me that a generation's happiest childhood memories may be long gone TikTok videos instead of innovative shorts and screen classics. And very recent studies are worried that French kids are turning into tech addicted couch potatoes and aren't getting enough exercise. So a trip to a, a communal experience at the movies and away from home screens is just the ticket. Mm, fostering a future generation of Absolutely. film fans. Thank you very much for that roundup, Lisa, this week. We'll leave you with a medley of snippets from my first film festival. Remember, you can get more movie news here on our website, france24.com, and on our social media feeds. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. <laughs> Tout en haut du monde. Et c'est tellement beau.